Where does this idea come from? My wife brings me to Rolling Stones. Look at this guy. You wrote Rain Man. You wrote Mozart. You're interested in in this people with this condition. And he's a champion surfer, and he has Asperger's, and he has a girlfriend who doesn't have Asperger's or autism. So, so it's a love story between a so-called, you know, Asperger's person and a so-called person who doesn't, and they're really in love, and they're a great couple. They're beautiful. They're both really beautiful kids. I had no formal education in writing at all because when I went to school. I gave, I'd given up writing, and I was studying politics and eventually law school. I was a lawyer for 17 years in the movie business. Never got to be Joe's lawyer, but I would love to have been. <laughs> um, so I, no, I don't have any formal education. And for anyone who wants to be a writer, you don't need formal education writing. In fact, when I speak at places, I tell people not to take writing courses. Because the people who teach writing courses, I mean, if they could be a screenwriter, they would be. They're just teaching courses because they really can't quite do it themselves. And they've learned rules to tell you, but the rules don't really apply. It has to all come out of you. So what you should do if you want to be a writer, is you get, if, like, if you say you want to be a screenwriter, right, for movies, you get a hold of 20 scripts of people whose movies you've liked. And those are easy to come by. And you just read them, and then you start writing yourself, and you just kind of, you just kind of imitate it. Sort of imitate the format, you see what their ideas were, you see how they put stories together, and you just start doing it yourself. So Spielberg had this house in Malibu, and it was the summertime when we wrote it, and we would go there every day, and it would be Spielberg and me, and Tom and Dustin. And that was about as much fun. The movie is sort of about the autism in all of us, and all the people that supposedly aren't autistic. And so we would learn, and the more we would talk to each other, the more autistic behavior we would all see in ourselves and how universal it was. And we would be kidding around about it all the time. We'd go, ah, you know, it was, it was really fun. I think that Raymond likes to, likes to draw because it gives him a feeling of, of control of expressing something without anybody criticizing it. You know, I think Raymond has lived in a way where he does express himself, a lot of people that he's around um, treat him in a way that doesn't make him feel good. And so Raymond has private behaviors, and I think drawing is one of them, where he can make himself feel comfortable and express himself and feel good about himself, and he's not risking somebody else. How did you come up with Tom Cruise as Charlie Babbitt? He came up with it all by himself. When I came onto the project, he was already there. And he was the, he was the reason the movie got made. The gigantic movie star then. And he would not let the project out. He so wanted to play that role that he just stayed with it and stayed with it and stayed with it until he got it made. He was really the hero. Before I even came on it, he had a woman um, who was devoted all of her time to just researching researching. But again, again, originally the character was retarded and not autistic. And that's what he was originally researching. And the first director on the piece was a guy named Marty Brest, a famous director. He was the original director. And, and when I was brought on to do the rewrite, I had the chicken pox from my daughter. And I couldn't sit with anybody because Dustin's <laughs> wife was pregnant and Marty's wife was pregnant and it's going to be dangerous. So I'm talking to everybody on the phone. Now I have a phone call with the director and and Dustin Hoffman and Tom Cruise on the phone with me. <clears throat> in the middle of that phone call, Dustin says, I just want to ask, I won't imitate his voice, but I just want to ask this one question, Ronnie. You know, the character is retarded, and that means he loves everybody, and he holds everybody's hand, and he kisses everybody, and therefore he's lovable. What if he was autistic instead and really difficult, so it'd be hard to love? Wouldn't that be better? I said, that's an interesting idea, and the director just says, so anyway, guys, that's the end of the number. It was like, <laughs> 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 and the conversation was over. I said to the director, I said, you know, that's a good idea. The director said, Ron, you're doing great. Stick with what you're doing. Everything's fine. And I said, this is a big movie star. When a big movie star tells you an idea, it's not really a question. It's really what he'd like to do. And Marty said, don't worry about it. Marty was fired within two weeks for creative differences. And the picture was shelved for like six months. And I'm living in Paris now at that point with my family. 
and I get a phone call from a guy named Mike Hovitz, who was my agent, who says, Steven Spielberg, who I'd never met, wants to now direct Rain Man, will you fly to Los Angeles and meet with him? I tell him, I meet with him, and the first thing he says to me is, Dustin Hoffman's right and you're wrong, why is that? I said, because he wants him to be autistic, right? He said, yep. He said, are you on board for that? I said, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Joy Luck Club is a great example. When we when we came to Jeffrey Katzenberg, who now runs DreamWorks Animation, but he was at Disney at that time. With the project, he said, "You have 11 million dollars to make this movie. I don't mean 11 million dollars and 15 cents. I mean you have 11 million dollars. You can do whatever the three of you want, Amy Tandy and the director Wayne Wang, as long as you don't spend more 11. You'll never get a note from me, and if you do, you can ignore it. But don't go over 11 million dollars." A bond company is our people who guarantee that if you go over budget, they'll pay it, but then they get to come in and make sure you don't go over budget like it's the mob. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who was the bond guy on Joy Luck Club was a guy that wore multicolored alligator boots, and he was on set every darn second, and he made us insane. And he would say, that he'd say, you've only got another hour of shooting a day, you can't go into overtime. This scene goes out. And he would take a pencil, a red pencil, and he would go to the, the sides of the script, and he would cross out scenes, and then we would have a fight. Jerry and Mary, two really different people. Jerry, the loveliest, sweetest guy you'll ever meet. Totally approachable. Mary's kind of nuts. Um, she doesn't have Asperger's or any form of autism, but she has some, a form of schizophrenia. And she has other kinds of disabilities or other kinds of issues and conditions. Chris really do sometimes amount to an actual disability, which you can't really function. And she's very mercurial and emotional. So when we started off, of course, they paid them a lot of money for their life rights. They had a contract, and they were told at the very beginning now someone's going to come in and write this movie, and it's going to be fictionalized. Originally, it was supposed to be big movie stars. It was supposed to be Robin Williams. This was years before it actually happened. And another project that Steven because, Spielberg was going to do. Because Spielberg was, was going to do it. That was another Spielberg project, bless you, that, that didn't wind up with Steven and wound up getting done in a smaller way. So they were all fine with it. When we started to do the script and fictionalize it, Mary would be constantly complaining that that wasn't true. That wasn't real. It didn't happen that way. And she'd get very, very exercised. So we said to her, though we didn't have to, look, if you like, we'll change the name, and it won't be Jerry and Mary Newport. There'll be two other names. And we will say it's inspired by your life, as opposed to saying it's a true story, which actually was bad for the film, because when you can say it's a true story, that really helps the sell of the film. And she was satisfied with that. And so we, we did that to make her, to make her happy. Um, and yeah, it does bother you when somebody doesn't even though they've agreed in front that you can fictionalize it, and then they kind of change their mind, it is, it is concerning you. 